suppose I've had a pretty unusual career path. Trained as a research scientist, I've always been interested in art as well. In my school years, I learned pastel drawing and oil and acrylic painting. Then uh, in, in college, I majored in physics uh, with a second major in mathematics, went on to graduate school and earned a PhD in electrical engineering uh, from Cornell University in 1987. I took a job as a research scientist at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. About that time, I became interested in M.C. Escher's uh, periodic designs with, for example, birds and fish that fit together. I started designing my own tessellations and I learned some print making techniques to do screen prints and uh, block prints of my own designs. I also made a puzzle called Squids and Rays to go along with those. And I started selling this stuff uh, at art fairs and found out very quickly that math teachers loved the puzzle. And so the business kind of got steered in that direction. Um, over time, I added some classroom posters and books, uh, manipulatives, and in recent years, the business has focused on polyhedral dice. My art explorations kind of turned into uh, toward fractals, fractal tessellations, and hand printmaking techniques aren't very amenable to uh, the fine detail involved in fractal images. I started doing digital prints uh, focused on that for several years. Uh, for example, making fractal trees using um, photographs of real trees and then uh, building those up iteratively in Photoshop, for example. More recently, maybe the last eight, nine years, I've primarily been doing surrounding sculpture uh, using clay to express my love of the, the beauty of mathematics. In addition to creating my own art, I've taken an interest in, in promoting mathematical art. Starting in 2001, I've taken the lead in making art exhibits an annual feature of the Bridges Conference, and starting in 2004, of the Joint Mathematics Meetings. A fractal is an object that exhibits self-similarity on different scales that can be related mathematically. Fractals have the property that as you zoom in further and further, you see more and more detail that looks similar to what you saw when you were zoomed out. Iteration is the process at the heart of uh, generating fractals. And iteration simply means repeating the same steps over and over. In my fractal tree prints, uh, most of them I use a photograph as a starting point. Um, in this one, fractal tree number one, however, the starting point was a, a portion of a spiral painted with a brush on paper. I then scanned that and digitally arranged smaller copies of that over and over in iterative fashion to form uh, this fractal tree design. This is one of the uh, largest and heaviest sculptures I've made. It actually weighs about 30 pounds or 14 kilograms. It's a fractal tree. It's called trifurcation. Uh, trifurcation means splitting from one into three smaller branches, just like bifurcation means splitting from one to two uh, smaller branches. Uh, this is done, um, this just has five generations, so there are four splittings. It splits from one to three to nine to 27. And then finally, there are 81 of the smallest feature. As this develops, it starts to resemble a classical fractal known as the uh, Sierpinski Triangle, which you can get a pretty good feel for right here.
This print is called Dragon Metamorphosis. At the center is a tessellation of dragons, white dragons and black dragons. Um, note that there's a line of glide reflection symmetry. That means you can translate the design and flip it. And the white dragons and black dragons will perfectly overlay each other. At either end, we see uh, on one side white dragons against a black background. On the other side, black dragons against a white background. So this is something called a ground figure reversal. Um, MC Escher used this in some of his better known prints such as Day and Night. And so what that mind interprets as, as the ground or, or background as opposed to the figure or foreground flips depending on where your eye is scanning over the thing. So on this side, white is seen as background and the dragons in which a black are the figure. On this side, the white is the figure and the black um, is the background. This ceramic sculpture is based on a mathematical object called hyperbolic helicoid. A helicoid is an object that extends um, um, to infinity in either direction. It's like a, like a spiral staircase or the DNA molecule. Um, the hyperbolic part's a little harder to, to wrap your head around. Um, the space we're used to, Euclidean three space, extends forever. Um, in hyperbolic space, you're basically depicting all of three-dimensional space in a finite, a finite sphere in this model. So things get small, close to the edge, allowing you to show everything um, in a ball. So that allows us to show this infinite helicoid uh, as a finite object. I actually made two passes at this object. The first one I was not completely satisfied with, it, it's shown here. Kind of looks nice, but it, it got too flat uh, on one end. Um, I tried to kind of build it flat with a little support in the center, which turned out just not to be you know, good enough. For this one, I, I started with a, a large spiral ramp that I built just to support the thing. And then I started with a slab uh, of clay that I cut as a big circle and set on the ramp, and then added some to the top of that, and flipped it over, added some to the bottom, to build up the whole structure. Um, you know, kind of went back and forth refining it, and then there's a lot of sanding involved to get this, this smooth surface. So this is the, the final object. Has an interesting appearance from, from different angles, which I, I think is a nice, a nice feature for sculpture. So this again is my hyperbolic helicoid.